Rudra calmly removed his emperor's coat and handed it over to Velgrind. Now dressed in a shirt, he turned his attention to Felway. Come, diva, Rudra called out to his favorite sword from his hero days. It was a sacred sword bestowed upon him by his friend and mentor, Veldanava, and ranked as the highest among all mythical grade swords. Feldway narrowed his eyes in recognition. That sword belongs to Veldanava Sama. That's correct. He gave it to me. That's unforgivable. Such a valuable weapon should not be wielded by a mere mortal. I couldn't care less. Rudra approached Feldway, and Velgrin watched anxiously, but she trusted Rudra's judgment. You're still a coward, aren't you? You never put all your strength into deciding between two sides. What does it matter? The leader must outlive everyone else. You know that, don't you? Well, perhaps. But if that's the reason you missed the chance to win a battle you could have won, it's not worth it, is it? What are you trying to say? I appreciate it. If you hadn't relied on Justice King Michael and fought Gryon on your own, she would have been hurt even worse. But I won't forgive you for hurting her. Get ready. Before Feldway could respond, Rudra was already in close quarters, casually swinging his sword. Feldway countered with his own sword, an equally remarkable weapon named the Ark, also given to him by Veldanava. The swords were of the same grade, and the outcome of the battle would be determined by their skill level. Their movements shattered the ground, and the impact of their clashes fractured the air, filling the surroundings with the smell of burning air. You're weak, don't you dare mock me, Rudra. That's what happens when you rely too much on your skills. I know you're trying to mimic me, but you can't be that naive. Rudra effortlessly deflected Feldway's sword. There was a significant disparity in their abilities. Justice King Michael is an absolute defense. I've used it for so long that I'm confident in its capabilities. But while it's active, you can't take any offensive actions, right? No magic, no other powers, no fighting aura. You can't even use magic to deflect attacks. However, there was a loophole. Although deflecting attacks with fighting aura was impossible, Haki's overwhelming power proved effective. Rudra was skilled at using this technique, releasing the castle guard just at the moment of attack to enhance its power through fighting aura. You knew this, so you mistakenly believed you were at a disadvantage. However, that was a strategy only I could employ because I am me. If you're not highly skilled with a sword, you'll easily lose your means of attack. Yes, I admit your point, but don't think you've won. You really think you can defeat me. Do you have any idea how many years I spent with Veldanava after he entrusted me with Justice King Michael? What do you mean? Do you honestly believe I didn't find a way to attack it? Are you foolish enough to think there's a way to defeat the most potent of all angelic, no, ultimate skills? You can't bluff your way past me. I'll tell you something. The power I received was Covenant King Uriel. Do you know its characteristics? It's merely a power for management purposes. Veldanava Sama used Covenant King Uriel to understand how to create his many powers. There's more to it than that. As you might know, the Covenant King Uriel possessed the ability to hear the voices of people connected to Veldanava. These voices could express hope, prayers for salvation, or various other desires, and this power remained potent when I wielded it. So, what are you trying to say? Do you see the similarity with the Justice King Michael you currently have? In other words, both the Covenant King Uriel and the Justice King Michael shared the trait of listening to the voices of those connected to them. By the way, the Covenant King Uriel also possessed an absolute defense, which was an application of the infinite prison and could be broken at a critical moment. I must say, the attack method I devised using it was quite impressive. He casually swung Diva in his hand, causing its blade to emit a radiant glow. Seeing the light, Felway's expression changed as he recognized its resemblance to the castle guard he wore. The more people who believe in me, the stronger I become. How many followers do you have? I have over a billion people relying on me. This move is the lethal strike that channels the united will of those who believe in me. Absolute severance. Stop fooling around. How can you wield the power of the Covenant King Uriel? It's still missing. You're not paying enough attention. Besides, that grand guy was also using Hope King Sariel. Masayuki's King of Heroes could even replicate lost skills. Rudra smiled confidently, as if it didn't matter what he revealed. You really don't like these tactics, do you? Felgrind was exasperated, yet enamored with Rudra's audacity. Only Rudra's sister Lucia had ever cautioned him in the past, and this scene was being recreated now. If that's the case, then you. That's right. While I can use the Justice King Michael right now, it's the Covenant King Uriel with the most powerful attack that will finish you here. Feldway remained alert, mobilizing not only the castle guard but also all his barriers in a defensive stance. And then, I've been waiting. Let's see how long you can hold out. Star King Dragon Flash, Nova Break. The clash was instantaneous, causing a devastating wave of destruction. The material area meant nothing 
and even Velgren struggled to contain the shockwave, ultimately failing. This immense power was what made Rudra a hero of the beginning who could rival Guy, and it was Feldway who fell. Well, that's a fair outcome. Rudra smiled victoriously and raised his right hand to the sky, signifying his declaration of victory. Feldway dropped to his knees, coughing up blood. I it can't be, I'm the one. You are too arrogant, Feldway. You always felt the need to be the best at everything, and that's why you lost sight of what truly matters. Don't make me sick. I don't need someone who's a shadow of his former self telling me what to do. You're right. That's why I can understand certain things. There won't be another chance. Today's defeat will be your last. With that, Feldway stood up as if the injury he had just sustained never happened. You're still as stubborn as ever. Well, I'll always emerge victorious, no matter how many times you come at me. The two men locked eyes, but Feldway eventually turned his back on Rudra and used instantaneous movement to escape with Mai. The material area and the barrier of the royal capital were in ruins, making pursuit impossible. However, Rudra wisely chose not to chase after him. Feldway vowed revenge, never forgetting the humiliation of this day. Meanwhile, Rudra basked in his triumph. Great job, Rudra. Rudra's face was pressed against Velgren's chest, and he didn't seem to be in the mood to complain. However, upon closer inspection, something was different. He was blushing, and his eyes were spinning. It wasn't Rudra anymore, he had reverted back to his original self, Masayuki. Using the Nova Break had depleted all his soul power, making it difficult to maintain the Rudra persona. He had been able to keep up the act until Feldway left, but it was mostly due to sheer willpower. Hinata approached Masayuki, who was released from Velgren's hold. It's nice to meet you, First Sama. My name is Hinata Sakaguchi. Before you leave, I wanted to say a few words. But before Hinata could finish her greeting, the noise of the crowd started to be heard. They were excited by Rudra's impressive display of power, believing that Masayuki had taken the battle seriously. It was a misunderstanding. But to those unaware of the situation, it appeared true. Seeing the battle had ended, people rushed to the scene, forming a circle around Masayuki. Minutes and others took the lead in holding back the crowd. Wow, Masayuki-san is so cool. That was my first time seeing it. He's the true beacon of light. Yeah, I didn't understand what was happening, but it looked awesome. Masayuki's inner thoughts were in turmoil. No, that wasn't me. Or was it me? Masayuki struggled with his feelings as the people showered him with praise. Thank you for your hard work. You looked great, Masayuki. Velgren handed him a jet black, gold embroidered emperor's robe, and as he put it on, he tried to gather his thoughts. He felt embarrassed being the center of attention, but he sensed trouble approaching as the knights from the capital arrived. Inada noticed that Rudra had returned to being Masayuki and softly apologized. Uh, Rianer murdered King Ejil and framed me for it. Masayuki was taken aback. That was a big deal. The crowd continued cheering, and Masayuki stepped forward. After a pause, he turned to face the audience, and just this simple gesture had a significant impact on the excited crowd. As expected, it's exactly as Rimuru-san told me. By using calculated gestures to win the hearts of the people, his skill's effect was amplified. With his skill now evolved into the King of Heroes, its impact was immense. Everyone, please calm down. I need you to stay composed and tell me what happened. As Masayuki spoke softly, the once excited crowd immediately fell silent. His words held a powerful effect, calming the people around him. Okay, don't panic, take your time. Even if you stumble or hesitate, it's fine, there's a way to fix it. That's it. Everyone, what is right and what is wrong? I believe you already know the answer just from witnessing this scene. Please trust in that answer, and I want to trust in you too. Masayuki didn't know the correct answer himself, but he hoped to avoid any hostility from the people. Perfect. I didn't say anything specific, so I can't be blamed if I'm wrong. As Masayuki spoke, the excited crowd suddenly calmed down. Minutes approached with a knight in tow and began to explain the situation. He was a formidable man, adorned in metal armor that covered his entire body, with a stern expression on his face. Masayuki felt fear creeping in. However, to his surprise, the knight saluted him with the utmost respect. I am honored to be in the presence of His Majesty Masayuki, the champion of Ingratia and Emperor of the Great Eastern Empire. Overwhelmed, Masayuki merely nodded in response. Despite his feelings of trepidation, he knew he had to speak up, and he began to address the knight. Um, King Ejil. Before he could finish his sentence about King Ejil's demise and the truth behind Hinata-san's innocence, the knight interrupted him with assurance. Fear not. If His Majesty Masayuki supports Hinata Dono, then any suspicions against her can be dismissed. We, the Knights of Ingratia, would never suspect her. So, have we managed to identify the culprit? 
Inada glanced Prince Elric, who seemed lost in thought. Fuahahaha, it's all over now, I'm ruined. Masayuki couldn't understand the situation, but Elric appeared to think he had seen through everything and self-destructed. Masayuki decided to act as if he understood everything, hiding his inner turmoil. It seems Masayuki-sama has identified the culprit and resolved the problem. Prince Elric killed his father, King Ejil. The mastermind behind it was Rhaenyr, the former commander of the Night Order. That's why Hinata-sama. Rhaenyr was the one who messed up at the council meeting, right? What a disgraceful act by the former commander of the Knights of Ingratia. So, he tried to seek revenge on Hinata-sama with the help of a monster. But it was our Masayuki-sama who saw through it and resolved Hinata-sama's predicament. As expected of our hero, even though he became the emperor of the Eastern Empire, he still remembers us. The prince's confession sealed the deal. The people were convinced without needing any explanation from Masayuki or Hinata. Hooray, Masayuki-sama. Glory to our Masayuki-sama. The cheers erupted once more, and Masayuki awkwardly raised his hand to respond. Hinata looked slightly dumbfounded, while Velgren seemed satisfied. Masayuki's inner self was filled with tears, thinking, whatever, I don't care anymore. But that was just how things always were. Unbeknownst to Masayuki, the next day, he would suffer terrible pains from the aftereffects of harboring Radra and various other reasons, including a rare kind of growing pain called soul pain.